Okay, so this will be good for you and for a lot of other people to hear. So, and I'm actually going to compliment another instructor that I heard this from because it's important to for my fellow PGA professionals to you know know that I'm using some of their information to help me teach better. When you talk about gathering swing speed, so in the case where sometimes you feel quick with your personal swing, or anybody else that is going to watch this video potentially feels quick. Well, what happens from a quickness perspective is, is the wrists are loading, the arms are swinging, the body is turning, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to load this golf club to the top. Now, when I transition it, or in the immediate second that I start to change direction to come back down, what most people do too quickly in order to calibrate swing speed is they do that because the release of the hands generates speed. The only problem is, is it deprives speed from the moment of impact when you do it too quickly from the top. You following what I'm saying? Okay. okay, so now on the flip side of that coin, even though I don't want somebody to go drastically slow, it allows your mind to think that you're going out of sequence because you're changing the speed in the transition mode. So instead of the quickness being too abrupt from the release of the wrists, we're going to have you wait on that for just a split moment. So now the arms will lower, the wrists will stay a little bit more cocked, and what that does is it preserves whip for the bottom. Now, let's keep that running for one second. So when I switch the camera angle to this angle now, okay, and you look at, look at the club when I swing it back, and I get to the top, if I use my wrist really quickly, it's gonna look like the club is away from the plane line. It's going to, the, the club head itself is actually gonna dart forward, right? Now, if I lower my arms and I keep my wrist hinged, the club's gonna look like it stays more on plane. Okay, so now I'm thinking again, for, for everybody that could potentially watch this video, calmness at the top, also translates into a couple of things. It translates into one, staying on plane a little bit longer, and two, reserving the energy more for the impact. Okay, now at the end of the day, where us, I think, as instructors need to be sensitive is the average instructor trying to help somebody lean the shaft more forward is talking about this, whereas if we can just get the average person to hit it more level, you're gonna be better off, and if you're doing this, you're gonna be worse off. So when you do this a lot up here, you get this a lot at the bottom. If you do this less up here, you're gonna get more of this. And if you do it even more, you're gonna get probably actually too much shaft length. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to coerce the release to be more abrupt here at impact. So at least you have a, you know, a left arm, for those of you that are left-handed or right-handed, Flips, flip the coin for everybody else that's hitting it from left side. And you get a little bit of shaft lean with the shorter clubs. And as the clubs get longer, everything appears to be just straighter. Okay. Uh, probably memory, memory on it. But, but does that make, you see what I mean? Yes. So it's a good way, that's, that's a great video for a lot of people yes. to see because it, it you know, you're kind of colliding what, what ideally you would think plane line and also smoothness together into one move that actually helps everything be better when you transition it into the downswing all at one time. You should have, done, you should have said that at the very yeah. end, damn it. Oh well. I get the point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you did kind of, but you said it really well there. There. Yes, you said it a little bit. You, you put it all together there. Now, but, yeah. but again, for you, more importantly, that, that video is more for you, yes. but... Actually, it's still running, so it's going to be on there. I'm yeah. sorry.